Uh, Jay Glazer, let's bring him on the show today. We got so many things going on right now. NFL insider for Fox, founder of MVP. I like to the huge crowd here. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi. No, you. Yeah. Yep. Sit, sit. Let's start with, with what we've, we're finding out to be a wildly entertaining dilemma. They gave up See, a lot to get Carson Wentz, and Carson Wentz is great. Yep. And Nick Foles can't lose. Philadelphia goes into New Orleans and wins. They've got to make a decision. Jay, they've got to make a decision. The fans now, they're all in the Foles right, right, camp, right. but where most executives I talk to are in the Wentz is really the better yeah. player. Is it a real dilemma here or not? Well, I think you go with the hot hand right now, but also that injury is like a three-month injury that that Wentz has. Okay. I mean, that's a fracture right there in that in that back. So that's not something that, you know, you're just you're hoping to push through in a week or two. That's not it. So yeah, you gotta go with the hot hand right now. I, I don't think you can pull off that hot hand, especially what he did last year. But in the offseason, you try and trade Nick Foles. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So that is the move. You try and get something for well, there is you definitely want to try and see he's gonna have a big market. In the offseason. Yes. Because the, the quarterback draft class this year is not good. That's right. Uh, people at the top of the draft also have quarterbacks, a lot of them. But there'll be markets for him, for Flacco. Um, there's one other guy out there I'm missing that. that we're going to have markets for a lot of these veteran quarterbacks. Like last year, Case Keenum had a market for him, obviously. Uh, you know, Cousins had a market for him. Alex Smith, they got that trade done early. Yes. I think you're going to see a lot of that. Coming up here. But they're going to keep Wentz. That's the yeah, play. Yeah, that's their guy. And okay. That's, he, like you said, he's the, it's interesting. He's the better player. Yes. But who do the Eagles play better with? That's a really interesting right? dilemma. It really is. It really is. Okay. Uh, let's go to something else. Um, I do not believe if you're going to use the Trubisky-Lamar Jackson style, mm-hmm. then you got to go all in. I said, I'm never going to jump out of a plane. But if I did... I'm the guy that gets in that plane and jumps out. I'm not saying circle back. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> there are certain things in life, Jay, you got to go all in on. Okay. If you're going to use Lamar and Trubisky, and we're going to do a lot of running and college stuff, you can't yank him in the third quarter because the backup's right. not equipped to do it. I got what the Ravens were doing, but a lot of people thought, this thing, you got what was the takeaway inside the league in your sourcing on Lamar? No, you know, look, that's their guy. You got to roll with him in good times and, and bad. And I think that, look, it took them a little while to figure out, too, they're going with seven defensive backs. We haven't seen this. They barely did it throughout the season. That's what great defensive coordinators do. For Gus Bradley to go and sell it to Anthony Lynn, let's go at seven DBs. And for Anthony Lynn to go, are you out of your mind? And for them to still do it, man, that's that's gutsy. That's what great coaching is. By the way, Gus Bradley is a guy who I think he should be on these lists for these head coaching candidates. But he's a defensive guy. He's a defensive guy. But other guys have had their resurgence. You know, Pat Shermer last year, after a good couple seasons, I think Gus should be on this list. Yeah. But these defensive guys are, some of them, he's very creative. He can command the room. But if you pulled him, if you pulled Lamar for Joe Flacco, why do we automatically think that Joe Flacco would have been able to figure out their defense no. better than Lamar? He and I don't think that's he's less right. mobile. Right, absolutely. And, and by the way, for all the Flacco fans, and there was a point I was a Flacco guy, remember this. They wouldn't be in the playoffs without Lamar. Right. Okay, so let's Not slow down. Uh, and we wouldn't be talking about a John Harbaugh extension <laughs> or anything right. like that. Right. Let's slow down on that. Um, the Colts resurgence. I, I said this. It's really funny, Jay. You think that we always see dynasties coming. But the Warriors got knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. The next year, they own the world. Right. Okay. Uh, we thought the Miami Heat were going to be forever. We had no idea Tim Duncan was this. We didn't see the Warriors coming. Nick Saban was good. Do we, we were gonna, Pete Carroll, right. we thought, was a dud hire by USC. <laughs> it looks like I can feel the Colts dynasty yeah. coming. Now, that, this one I'm going to predict. Nine draft picks, 100 million cap space. Come on, Jay. People in the league know this puppy's about to go, right? Well, they also have a real personal guy in there, Chris Ballard. Yes. No politics to him. There are a few guys in this league. Chris Ballard, John Schneider, what he did in Seattle, Steve Kime, Ozzie Newsom is one of these guys who don't get the players they want. They get the players that their head coach is going to be able to use and who their head coach is going to be able to use properly in their schemes. But also he wants to bring some attitude to that team. Yeah. Quentin Nelson, that's a bad dude right there. That's yeah. Larry Allenish yeah. type, right? Um, they got crushed when they picked Leonard that high. And he's, no, nope, this is what's going to happen in our defense. We're going to use him this way. And it really, I think with Chris Ballard, you know, running that team over there, uh, they have, yeah, they got a, a good decade to go of winning. That's what I feel. Mm-hmm. And I also, one of the things I like about them is I don't believe, I'm just going to ask you, Antonio Brown and Lavian Bell, right. 
I have been told, not by Ballard, but I was told by a rival executive to the Colts. He said they won't take Le'Veon Bell. I, I don't, see, here's the thing. Chris Ballard doesn't talk. He's not one of these guys out yeah. there constantly talking to me. Yeah. He doesn't do that. So wherever this came from, I don't know where it is because that's, it's not their style. Plus, the way Marlon Mack is playing. Yeah. Like, why would I pay 120 why would I million? A million percent. I don't see that. I think obviously, I think it's agent driven where you're trying to get a market. That's what I for think. the player. But why use the Colts? They don't talk to anybody. Yeah, they're not media people. Okay, right? Rams, Cowboys. Yep. Now the, the Rams were great for about six weeks, seven weeks. Then I sold my stock. I didn't like what I saw defensively. And then the last two weeks, they rest Gurley and they mow people. Right. And I'm like, okay. What Rams am I getting against Dallas? I think the Rams you need to see is a Rams defense that doesn't only rush the passer. Because obviously that's the issue. you got to stop Zeke. So the way they go about it, they kind of rush the passer on almost every play. Even when they're playing the run, it's like they're rushing the passer to get that running back. They're going to have to change things up. Just like you saw the the other L.A. team change it up this week. Yeah. And Wade Phillips, very smart coordinator. They can't just do, in my opinion, the same things they've done because everything here has got to be about stopping Zeke. You don't want Zeke to beat you. You want to make Dak try and beat you, yeah. especially with a receiving core that's banged up. I kind of feel with the Rams, there's a bunch of big names, but their productivity mm-hmm. hasn't lived up to their names. There's a, they're looking for, like you said, they're going for the interception and the sack, right. and, and mostly NFL football is. This weekend there was a moment where Derwin James went for the pick. Right. Instead of playing his right, man, right, right, right. like playoff football is not about the big hit. It's about don't let anybody over your head. And L.A., the Rams tend to be a little bit of a glamour defense. Is that they, fair? They, they also they went for it this offseason with all these big names. Not real like, and I understand because the Eagles did the same thing last year. It was like they're playing fantasy football, and the Rams did the same thing by bringing in Sue and going for the cornerback and going for Cooks and you know all these different. And they didn't need to. They had their core. They had their Gurley and Goff and Whitworth, and Donald. and Donald, and they have those guys. And you know, I understand why they went for it, but you're right, I think we needed more productivity about so, out of some of those guys, the Sioux of the world that got brought in. Okay, so I want to ask you about uh, a couple of things. Let's, let's, there's a bunch of coaching stuff out there. Yep. The USA Today, uh, there's eight jobs. They said the Packers, Browns, Jets, Broncos, Bucks, Dolphins, wait. Cardinals, Bengals were the best job. That was according to wait, wait, So that's – wait, wait, rank this again for me. Packers, okay. Packers Browns, Browns, Jets, Jets – Broncos, Bucks, there Dolphins. There we go. It's on our screen. Okay, so now here's what I would change here. Packers, yeah, because you don't have an owner you're really – I don't answer. like and it. You got eight, but you don't have an owner that you're answering to that can kind of meddle, so that's good. Um, and you have a quarterback there, and you want to see that. And obviously, culture, if you like cold weather, that's the place. There's just so much history there. The Green Bay Packers is a dream. The Browns you love because you have Baker Mayfield, right. and you have Miles Garrett. Yeah. You have those guys. So yeah, you want a chance to go for somebody like that. The Jets, that's – in my opinion, I dropped them all the way down. Because in New York, too, I'm from New York. You're not just going against the Giants. You're going against the Yankees. You're competing against everybody. A lot of pressure. And, and their roster is a bad roster. I do love a Mike McCarthy for the Jets that can completely help rebuild the culture So you like McCarthy the to the Jets? I love that one because it can help rebuild that culture over there. There's a lot that they're going to have to build Is there an up. underrated job in the list? Yes, Arizona. Arizona, in my opinion, I wouldn't put them seven. First of all, you have a GM we just talked about and Steve Kahn that will get you players. They have cap room. They're going to go spend. They have a quarterback. If you believe in the quarterback, then they have a quarterback there. And it's Scottsdale. Are you kidding me? You got to go live in Scottsdale? Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah but- hell. Don't threaten me with a good time. All right. Well, well you got to think about this, though, man. It's like it's a, it's a quality of life thing. I love it there. Um, Cincinnati, I think they're exactly where they're supposed to be. Again, I would drop the Jets down. Denver is tough because you're always in John Elway's. Oh, no, no. He's, yeah, and, and he'll he's come rest- to your meetings. He'll, yeah. he, is, he is ultra competitive, which means his competitive nature is going to come off onto you guys, and you better step up in certain situations. That's, that's why, plus, they don't have a quarterback. Um, you know, they got the two defensive players over there. I think a guy like Mike Munchak or Vic Fangio, and a veteran who can handle Elway, yes. will be good there. All right, just a couple of things. Gut feeling on Antonio Brown with the Steelers. Which I don't one- think he's back. So he's gonna. You think, think he's gone? I think he's gone. Yeah. yeah. They're they're renegotiating for the record Big Ben's contract. Right, right, right. To perhaps make it easier right. when they lose. But him. I just think also it's there are certain things that yeah they've just run their course and it's just sure. man that's that it's hard to repair that relationship. If everybody in that locker room thinks you quit on me, yeah, I'm gonna have a hard time with that. I'm laying my blood and sweat and my joints out there for you. I can't possibly look at somebody thinking they didn't do the same for me. Okay, so Jay Glazer says Antonio Brown probably mm-hmm. gone. I got to throw out Le'Veon Bell. I know he's not in the discussion. Yeah. He is an 85 catch, 250 carry guy. Somebody is going to make a move on him, somebody right? Somebody will. Uh, and again, who 
I could see an Eagles. I could see uh, Tampa. Dolphins. Tampa. I, you know, again, it's so hard because he has to make up that lost money. So the contract has to reflect him making up that lost money. You saw the, the Cardinals, they gave that money to David Johnson. It hasn't really panned out like that. Somebody has to be convinced that, yeah, we're going to – he has to, on, at least on paper, make up for that money or else why did he hold out? He's got to make up for it. That's an awful big price tag. Okay. Good stuff. So, hey, Jay- real quick, one more thing. Yeah. That other one, Buccaneers. We talked off air a little bit. I think Bruce Arians gets done possibly in the next day or two. Bruce Down Arians Tampa. coaching Tampa. That's what I think, but something happened in that interview, too, I've never heard of. They put his doctor as part of the interview process. They basically made him take a physical. I talked, talked to him yesterday, two days ago. He's down there, go to the hospital, get a full physical. They're talking to his doctor. I've never heard of a doctor being part of the interview process. Because Bruce is but he pretty much, Yeah, and he's gone through some health stuff. But, man, he will write. If anybody could write that quarterback, it's Bruce Arians. Good stuff, bud. Thank you, buddy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.